The Syntax of Things by Arisha Chapter 57 Parentheses The Morning Dove Suddenly impatient for schools to start, aren't we? Harry turned around and rolled his eyes before tugging at his Gryffindor sweater to pull it off. I was just trying it on. It doesn't fit me anymore. I need a new one. He did most likely not. Once the Dark Lord conquered Hogwarts, Harry wouldn't stand a chance of continuing his education there. He'd be captured and killed the very moment he'd be seen. Ah, but that was the plan, anyway. Lose weight. Kidding me. Harry crawled on the bed, searching for his glasses. Severus sat on his chair. It's too short. My stomach's out. I need a new one. Then buy one. I'm locked up. Will you buy it for me? Harry sneered. It occurred to Severus that he was trying to mimic his voice. A failing. Severus folded his arms. Happily, nothing more ordinary than the Slytherin head of house buying Gryffindor sweaters, isn't it? I can't wait to get out of here, Harry said. Hermione says they almost burned the burrow down. The Death Eaters. He looked at Severus. You think Hogwarts is going to be safe? Certainly. As safe as always, come to think of it. Taking into account all the murders and frauds that occasionally taught in it. Or the werewolves. I trust the headmaster. As close to the truth as he could get. Once Dumbledore was gone, Severus would have no one. He would be lost. As much as he wanted to think about Harry's future from then on, his own misery overtook him. Without Dumbledore, he wouldn't know where to start from, what to do. Not a single living person would ever believe again that Severus wasn't a traitor, and Dumbledore was blindly willing to sacrifice Severus's soul so he could depart from the world with style. Nothing new now, was there? Well, I don't. Inwardly, Severus nodded in awe at Harry's wisdom. Outwardly, well, he drank his tea. Why would I? He doesn't tell me anything. I don't know what's happening out there, and I can tell that he's making plans for me again. Exquisite plans. Marvelous ones. But Harry knew more than Severus, even if he wasn't aware of it. A fact of which Severus could take slight advantage of. What has he told you? Harry sat on the bed across Severus. His eyes were focused on the floor. Well, I was the one who brought him Slughorn's memory, so I know about the Horcruxes. I think Dumbledore suspected it all along, though, didn't he? He just didn't know there were seven. Severus was trained to deal with this kind of emergency, facing the unbelievable and nodding his head calmly at it, finding himself unable to comprehend the shock, but casually tugging it away for further examination. He clutched his fingers around the mug. His brain failed to come up with a satisfying response. Seven horcruxes! Seven parts of the same soul, seven murders under the ritual of ripping apart one's own psyche and shipping it into random objects for further use. Had any piece of soul remained inside Voldemort, or was he now simply an empty hollow shell? So this must be why Dumbledore insisted that the Dark Lord had no capacity of comprehended emotions. The invisible grip that had got hold of Severus's throat tightened dangerously, and he gulped another mouthful of tea to hide his astonishment. He'd been suspecting it, yes, he said stiffly, keeping his frustration in check. He didn't want to hear anything else about it. Watching a brat half his age inform him of what he should already know wasn't exactly flattering. He toyed with the idea of exposing Harry by starting a casual discussion about horcruxes with Dumbledore. For all the new information he'd get, none at all, really. Severus was loyal to Dumbledore. He respected him. He respected alcohol, too. I'd left a bottle of whiskey here, he recalled suddenly. Harry looked up in awkwardness. Oh, um, yes, you did. Fetch it. The blush that spread over the boy's face wasn't at all satisfying. Severus creased a brow. Harry stared. Why? What kind of question was that? Because I wanted back, you prat. Harry snorted and an apologetic look shattered his features momentarily. Then the cheeky grin was back. Um, I don't have it anymore. I thought you'd forgotten about it. I'm sorry? That didn't make sense. You drunk a bottle of whiskey by yourself. When? Walking over, he grasped Harry's chin and tilted his head back to check on him. He was sober. Harry pulled free. Not today. You know, all these weeks. Since you lived in here. I didn't drink it all at once. It's been over a week. Have you been drinking daily? No. And not much. Hey, Potter. Damn, too close. Harry sighed. Look, it's nothing bad, okay? It was just making me relax when I needed to, and I haven't been drinking daily anyway. You drink regularly, too. It's not bad. 
Thank God the boy had found a proper role model to look up to, enjoying his own enmity and picking up drinking. Severus had made a bitter bastard out of him and served him right. Or perhaps not. Not that this matters to you at all, but we are not the same age, Potter. Severus glared. Harry took the message. And smiled. All right, I'm not going to drink again. Just so you know, since I'm of age now and it's not prohibited anymore, every time you do this, you just prove you care. Or I could have simply wanted the whiskey for myself, he silently protested. He dismissed his impulse to say it out loud when he realized that he wasn't fooling anyone. What classes do I have to take to be in order? Harry asked. Severus's breath was calm. His lungs, however, were burning. Suppressing a yawn, he rolled on his back and rubbed his face. Defense, potions, transfiguration. You should also apply to the ministry's courses, too. Concealment, disguise, stealth, and tracking. You won't be learning anything useful until they accept you to the office, but Dumbledore makes an effort to provide decent enough preparatory courses, and I'm also being paid extra to teach them. It occurred to him that explaining this while laying in bed with a student wasn't exactly his idea of proper career assistance, especially in the early morning. At the focused look on Harry's face, Severus wondered how long he'd been thinking about this. His mind intervened that he probably didn't want to know. He was dismayed by how Harry's familiarity-seeking techniques were far more effective than Severus's determination to assert himself. Oh, but they're optional, right? They're not mandatory. Harry propped himself up on one elbow. His other hand was occupied with playing with Severus's upper arm. With his index finger, he lazily drew invisible patterns on Severus's skin and scratched them. They are, if you don't want to fail later on due to lack of basic knowledge. The classes you'll take will be mentioned in your report as well. It'd be careless to dismiss the possibility of a better future opportunities. The heaviness of the conversation throbbed and kicked at his insides. All this was rubbish, a consolation, a mockery. Harry would be dead long before he stepped foot in the Orber office. Severus felt blessed for having this moving knowledge all to himself to enjoy. May as well throw a party behind Harry's back and invite no one but Albus Black and Dumbledore to share this utter thrill with. Then proceed with ending the party with an unforgivable. And even then, Dumbledore's corpse would laugh at him for having done everything exactly as ordered. My grades are not bad. I just don't know how many classes to take. If I take too many, I might get overwhelmed. I don't want to have to drop a class because I'm finding it difficult to go. And this concerns you at... He looked at the clock. Seven in the morning. Yes, it's my future. He had no future. And death showed no pity to the dreaming youth. Dying was the easy part, and the path to it was in Severus's hands to create. Yet again, the irony was too much, the pain. Nowhere to be seen. Severus sealed the hideous sentiment of attachment away and promised himself to destroy it later when alone. Death should it be scheduled. Death was supposed to come and go on his own terms. This death, the boys, would be the period at the end of a sentence. He was vaguely aware of the impatient brat next to him waiting for an answer. Blast that boy. What advice to give? He was once again caught by his own selfish compulsion to spill the truth and not give a damn about the consequences. He didn't, and he silently applauded himself for still having the self-control to bite back the yearning for the sake of deception. Encouraging Harry would only harm Severus in the long run. He had no reason to be affected by the boy's upcoming murder, and if he played this right, he wouldn't feel a thing when the time came. Well, getting more and more intimate with him every day was not how he'd define playing this right. Your grades are average at best. And even that is only because you're the chosen one. Were you any other student, you would shockingly discover that you are not nearly as good as you think you are for the career you wish to follow. You have to exceed expectations in all your classes, not just the mandatory ones. Harry wrinkled his nose, then frowned. That's impossible, especially with you teaching defense. Wait to see how you'll do with me being headmaster, a voice in his head mused. Severus mentally punched it on conscience. With me teaching defense, you'll get what you deserve. Try harder and you'll be rewarded. It occurred to Severus that this had come out wrong. Harry grinned. Severus yelled. Wear your glasses, you stupid brat. You're squinting. Severus rolled his eyes as Harry reached to the nightstand. 
when he rolled back to where he was and crashed on Severus. Severus did not complain. Harry rested his cheek on Severus's shoulder and placed a hand on his sternum. You see, he had absolutely nowhere else to go, and the rest is rust and stardust. How about more private lessons, then? Severus glared. Harry chuckled. No, I mean it, and anyway, I won't have much to do in my free time, so... Hermione will be studying her brains off, and she'll be forcing Ron to do the same, I suspect. And the possibility of studying with your friends instead of studying with me isn't exactly exciting, is it? Harry shrugged. You know more than them, and it's going to be in my report, too. With no warning, Harry bit Severus's upper arm softly, his mouth still forming a smile while doing so. Severus bit back a grunt as he grabbed Harry's hair to pull him off. Idiot, behave yourself. Harry laughed, and as always, Severus gave up. The boy rested his head back on his shoulder, and Severus found himself lazily stroking his nape with a finger. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Hermione and Ron almost know they fancy each other now. And how is that supposed to concern me or even make sense? I mean, Ron was with Lavender, okay? For a while. And Hermione was kind of mad at first, but then she was just, you know, insulted. So she dated this other guy for a bit, and I was supposed to tell Ron... But I was also supposed to pretend I said it by accident. The thing is, she didn't really date anyone for real. It was a trick. But then Lavender broke up with Ron anyway because she suspected he liked Hermione more. So you're raving, Potter. In case you have failed to notice, I don't care. The fact that he'd have to face in class a boy he had slept on the same bed with was already difficult enough. To begin authority over more students whose hormones he'd been aware of was at the very least horrifying. And Ginny doesn't mind anymore that I'm gay. I do. Congratulations. Honestly, I think part of her knew before I even told her. She was trying to do things, and I couldn't. I let her do something to me once, but it just didn't work. Exciting piece of information for the early morning. Severus couldn't have asked for more. He was grateful. Blessed even. Have you read any of the books I gave you? He said in an attempt to lead the conversation somewhere else. Anywhere else, really. Flip through them. Transfiguration is a bit difficult. And potions mentions ingredients I didn't even know existed. Severus rubbed his eyes and took a reasoning breath. Give me your potions book. Harry crouched across the bed and delved into his trunk. Severus was given a few moments to change his mind and he heedlessly let them pass in vain. He found himself in a rush to do this before he regretted it. Harry gave him the book and Severus shifted to sit back against the pillows. He went through the pages quickly. These chapters were known to him as much as his reflection was in the mirror. He'd taught and repeated these passages for the best part of the last 17 years. There was nothing in there he couldn't teach by memory. He folded various corners of pages as he flipped through the book and did not bother to check twice. He closed it and handed it back. Slughorn pays more attention to these chapters, usually. They are objectively easier than the ones I choose to give new students, but you will sadly have to make do with a less capable professor. Make sure to memorize perfectly well everything that's in there, and you'll most likely pass. And I would have never done this were you to actually be there for your new examinations, he inwardly added to give his conscience a pat on the back. Harry looked at the book, dumbstruck. Then it's Everest. Then at the book again. Oh, right. Okay. He luckily knew better than to thank Severus for it. You ever worry about Hogwarts? It was an absurd question, and Severus was momentarily caught off guard. What they might do to it if... Lying down on his belly again, his weight on his elbows, Harry's eyes fell sullenly on Severus's dark mark. If they take control of it... Nothing to worry about, snapped Snape. Hogwarts is... I know, I know, Harry said quietly. With great horror, Severus watched as Harry's fingers hovered over the mark momentarily, hesitantly. It was darker than ever now, ingrained into his flesh so perfectly, as though it had always been there, always part of him. Calmly, the boy lowered his hand and touched it. Severus held his breath. Nothing happened. He didn't know what he expected. Nothing. No burning pain, or sharp agony, or even that uncomfortable itchiness when he was about to be summoned. Nothing at all apart from a persisting feeling of generic filthiness at the fact that he still carried that thing on him. 
and having Harry acknowledge it so openly as part of him, without running away, as he should, without being absolutely terrified and disgusted, as he should. I can't imagine this going on forever, Voldemort. I know how it must end, and I know I must be the one to do it, but I don't know if I can, if I want to kill anyone, even Voldemort. Harry pressed his lips together, tracing the mark absently, as if it didn't mean anything to him, as if it was like any other part of Severus's arm. Do I just wait for him to come and get me, or do I go search for him? I don't know what's the right thing to do. I don't know. But I'm not afraid. At least I don't think I am. Severus flinched as he pushed away the nightmare he was being part of. Distancing himself from it, unfortunately, only made it more clear. He clung to the hope that they never have to leave this room. It was fine. All was fine. He wasn't Severus Snape here. A not-so-dim aspect of himself objected that he couldn't recall a time when he was more Severus Snape than now. But that part had to be wrong. You kill him or he kills you. Whatever happens, the outcome will be the collapse of our world as we know it. The fact that you delude yourself over your supposed victory only proves how immature you are. Severus stood up and paged to get out of here. What's wrong now? Where are you going? Harry's complaints were muffled by Severus's inner arguments of how low he himself had fallen for the sake of this little heaven that provided nothing but pointless hope. He was quite sure he didn't want to know where this hope was leading. The last time ruined him. Lily's death had ruined him. He had to get out of here. Severus! A hand grabbed his arm to stop him, and Severus turned and smacked the boy hard across the face before he could stop himself. The regret came even before the smack. He was aware of the boy's eyes burning his neck, but he didn't turn to look back at what he had done as he dressed himself. You will not see me again until you learn to call me sir, he said stupidly as he stepped into the hearth. The castle's corridors were too cold for this time of the year. It occurred to Severus that even the ghosts were out of sight. As he quickened his pace, the sound of his own shoes against the stone floor was the only thing he could hear, and he focused on it with every inch of his being. The noise of his own thoughts was still louder, and Severus wanted it muffled, silenced, gone. He couldn't recall noticing the moss clinging onto the walls like this before. It seemed that the entire world was decomposing. The air wrapped around him like a heavy cloak as he ascended the tight spiral of stairs. In the absence of flaming torches, the dimness gave the impression of a frightful winter twilight, despite it being only August. Severus slammed the heavy door open and was not surprised to find Dumbledore sitting on his high chair. Undoubtedly, the man didn't have anything better to do than pretend to run the school even during summer. Or he simply knew Severus was coming. You can't do this, Severus said. Dumbledore smiled, but his smile didn't quite reach his eyes. Severus? You can't. He doesn't deserve it. You can't let him die like that. Not so pointlessly. Not now. Dumbledore stood and Severus drew his wand. Lower your wand. Dumbledore commanded coldly. Severus didn't move. Are you going to curse me, Severus? In here? Severus shook his head. Severus, please! Severus dropped his arm. His wand slipped from his fingers, fell on the carpet. It didn't matter. Nothing did... Please. You know it pains me more than anyone, yet it must be done. Severus shook his head, refusing to listen, refusing to obey any more. I have entrusted you with the truth, because I believed you would understand the importance. No, 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 you entrusted me so you can use me, like you've been doing all these years. You have no remorse, no interest in his life. Telling me he need my protection and then sending him off to die. I never said it would be easy for any of us. Harry's all I have. For the first time in ages, he felt his voice breaking. His eyes burned. You owe me this. After everything I've done, risked my life, betrayed friends. Please, please let him live. How reason you have? Have I not pleased you enough? Have I not done anything I could to keep him safe? To keep an eye on him always? It's impossible to avoid one's destiny, Severus. You know this as well as I do. The boy must die. We've discussed this. His legs were too weak to support him anymore. He dropped before Dumbledore and his knees hit the floor hard. Despair consumed him. There must be a way, please. 
If anyone can do something, it's you. You could save him. There must be a way, please. When the words stopped coming, the tears did. Mourning for someone still alive was not supposed to feel so familiar to him. A painful déjà vu of a fate that he was doomed to relive over and over again pierced his heart. Mourning was supposed to be something dignified and stoic, perhaps, but he cried like a child, noisily, angrily, the numbness of the loss already ripping his chest apart as hot tears ran down his face. He choked on his sobs. The pain struck him everywhere. It was doubling him over. He squeezed at Dumbledore's hand and kissed it. He could save Harry. He could find a way. It wasn't supposed to end like this. Harry had to live. I know it's sad, Severus, but there is no other way. Voldemort can't be killed as long as Harry lives. I don't care about Voldemort! Ra emptiness nibbled at his stomach like a hungry bat. A strong hand gripped his shoulder. Severus flinched away. Save him! I know you can't save him! Save... Please. Snot streaked from his flaring nostrils down his lips. His fists opened and closed on his lap, yearning for what solution could mend his pain. You never cared. You never hesitated to risk other people's lives so you could reach your goals. The boy's safety didn't... Never concerned you. You only wanted him to live for as long as you needed him to. He looked up to see Dumbledore's tired blue eyes staring back at him with pity. His features betrayed his age, and Severus was suddenly talking to a very old man. A man tired of the many years on his back, weakened and exhausted from life and its fights. The powerful wizard who held the world in his hands was nowhere to be seen. Do you really believe that, Severus? Do you believe that if there was a way for him to live, I wouldn't have chosen it? You don't see all the things I do, Harry. Please, Sever said again. Better, it's better to kill me. We can tell Voldemort to kill me instead of him. I'll take his place. This is my fault. I should pay. Not him. I should pay for this. Kill me. Kill me. Dumbledore opened a cabinet, and the moment after, a small vial was shoved into Severus's trembling hands. Severus recognized it as some sort of calming draught. He clutched at it on his lap, but didn't drink it. He remained still as his chest heaved and his fingers shook. It was hysterical crying. He couldn't top himself. Don't let him die. Don't. He can't. Not again, please. I can't do this. It's not fair. Please. It is the only way. The hand returned to his shoulder. Calm down, please. You'll understand when you do. I know how much you cared for Lily, but... You don't get to talk about Lily! He screamed. You killed her too! Everyone I have ever loved... This has nothing to do with Lily. Thought it did. Not about her. Calm down, sirs. I'll lose him. I can't. I love him more than my own life. Please. If Dumbledore was shocked, he didn't show it. After a small silence, he offered Severus a hand. You should rest, Severus. There are many things to be done. I need you to be strong. Severus snorted in between sobs. He didn't accept the hand. The file rolled from his lap to the floor. Why? Why are you doing this to me? He didn't know who he was talking to. He didn't know whom to blame anymore. Why? He shouted, and all the images he had been blocking out of his mind half his life were now vivid again. Lily's corpse on the newspapers, Lily's funeral, which he never attended, everyone saying what a perfect couple she'd been with James, everyone willing to take the boy who lived, the Dark Lord proudly announcing to him that he was planning to kill Lily and James Potter. Severus crying before an Albus Dumbledore who had done nothing to protect her. Crying before her death, sensing far too well that no one could help her once the Dark Lord wanted her dead. Knowing far too well that Dumbledore's plans didn't exactly include her safety or her survival. Crying after her death and weeping as his soul shattered to a million pieces he did not think possible that could be glued back together again. They had only to be broken again. Please. 
he croaked again, his voice rough and pathetic, and as he blinked his tears away, he knew that this battle was lost. Lily was never his. Harry was. He endured this howl once, but one could only take so much. This strike would finish him. <laughs>